Can the leader of a group impact the behavior of the group members just based on how they perceive the group members? This is an important question when you really think about it. Because depending on what your group leader thinks about you, you might be living some limitations that don't even belong to you. They aren't even accurate. And if that's true, wouldn't you want to know about it? My name is Sherry and I am the author of From Sabotage to Success. During my videos, I read portions of the book. I talk a little bit about beliefs, attitudes, behaviors, hypnosis. And I share with you how you can break free from limiting beliefs and reach your true potential. Sometimes it's about you, sometimes it's not about you. I'm gonna read a little portion of my book and I also am gonna mention a book I'm reading right now, which is, It Didn't Start With You. It's about epigenetics. It's about how sometimes things that have happened in your ancestral line are having an impact on you even if you never met the person who's having an impact on you. That's pretty profound. I mean, I think it's easy sometimes for some of us to get really locked up into our own beliefs, our own scenarios. It's all my fault, I did it all. And there's a lot more going on than that. There's the people that you spend the most time with. There are the people who you listened to and took seriously. And then there's the way that you internalize that. A lot of people would say you internalize it because it's trauma. Uh, maybe that's true and maybe that's not the only way that it happens. Because I think when you tell people that it happened because of trauma, you imme immediately kick out the idea for all the people who think that they weren't traumatized or that that doesn't apply to them. But let's just say that some people's opinion tends to be more important to us than other people's opinions. And a lot of times that's the leader of the group and it has a big impact on us when we're kids. And one of the main leaders of the group is the teacher. Put something in the comments if you've ever felt like you were, ex you were changed for life based on something that happened, uh, something that you experienced with your teacher. It could be good or bad. I'm currently a professor and I try to be good. <laughs> And, but at the same, uh, by the same token, I see time and time again, semester after semester, adult students who are currently living the impact of something that happened to them in kindergarten, middle school, high school. And it's impacted them at such a deep level that they get panic attacks just when they read the syllabus and it says there's going to be a paper to write. They already automatically are freaking out over it. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about just this one little portion in my book from Sabotage to Success. And then maybe I'll say a little bit more about classrooms, leaders, teachers, and why it's important for you to cut the cords with any toxic people who have implanted ideas in your mind that you are wrong, that you are bad, that you should be ashamed, that it's all your fault, because that is contributing to your self-sabotage and it's based on something that is not true. Okay, an interesting study was done with elementary students and their teachers. 
Researchers told teachers that a certain number of students in their class were late bloomers and were expected to make great academic gains. In truth, all students were identical in academic potential. Eight months after the teachers were told about the gifted students, researchers came back into the classroom to find that indeed, these students were doing better than others in their class. It seemed that the teachers had a positive outlook for these students and therefore spent more time with them. The positive treatment affected the students, allowing them to improve their grades. Okay, so for the positive or for the negative, the person who is in charge of you and how they're treating you has a lot to do with how you end up. Well, what are you supposed to do about that now? You ended up how you ended up and whether it was because of somebody else's influence or not, it still has impacted decades of your life. Well, there are ways to break free of self-defeating behaviors and thoughts. Hypnosis is one of those ways. EMDR is one of those ways. If it's automatic to you and you've been doing it for decades, you probably do want to seek professional help from someone. Just make sure that the person you're receiving professional help from doesn't also see you as limited because of your experience. In my experience as a professor and then before and then in between and before that, I mean, I have been working with people for decades. I've worked in drug rehab. I've worked at an after school program for at risk youth. I've worked in a hypnosis clinic for wealthy people in Orange County. All kinds of people have sat and talked to me and told me about their scenario. I have heard thousands of stories. I have met thousands of people. I have watched thousands and thousands of people go from a place where they felt lost or stuck to going to a place where they got something, something got triggered or activated inside of them and they moved to a new level of potential and a new way of experiencing life in a way they never did before. And so I absolutely know and believe that this is possible. And there are a lot of clinicians who feel the same way. So you wanna go with somebody who believes in that, but, and also go with a treatment method that is not going to force you to relive stories about the past over and over again, over and over again, over and over again, just for the sake of let's tell it one more time because it still upsets you. Well, <laughs> it's going to be probably just as upsetting the 10th time you say it as it was the first time you say it, maybe even more. You want to start clearing that stuff out of your system, not digging in deeper on it. It's easy to just keep repeating the same beliefs. That's natural. It's not even about you trying to do it. That's just naturally what your brain is going to do. And your brain is actually going to tell you some of those stories over and over again that were dangerous and uncomfortable because it thinks that that's going to make you be safe. So it takes some time for you to to, in a sense, let your brain and your body know that, hey, it's uh, not 1970 anymore and you don't have to do that. I let you off the hook. The job is over. And somewhere underneath all of that is the authentic, strong you that can be found and can be seen, especially when the right eyes are looking upon you. 